Dire Team Ban. What's up, guys, and welcome back to the Game Show Invitational. We are going to have a best of three between Goomba Gaming and Power Rangers. This is, I believe, from the first round of the real bracket stage. So, uh, yeah, it is double elimination, so no one's going home just yet, but still, should be a pretty good one. I'm Mike Loris today. Good morning, your casters. Kefka is also on the line. How are you doing today, dude? I'm doing good. Uh, finished with my finals, so summer break now for me, so nice. I'm doing really good. Team ban. Well, you could uh, spend all that time watching Dota, and that's the life, the life that everyone yeah. wants. Goomba Gaming have two players that are unfortunately not recognizable. I don't know if you know who those guys are, but I think I, both sides have their full lineup. Ban. Yeah, I think so too. I think the, the question mark uh, is... Uh, the one with Avatar question mark is the is pass, and I think one one o one is RMN, mm -hmm. but I'm not one hundred percent sure. I couldn't get a confirmation from a moment remaining. before the game started, so yeah, whatever. We'll just we'll assume that Five one of them is remaining. playing one of those roles, and it should more or less be fine throughout the entire thing. But uh, yeah, it's been quite a long time since we casted Radiant with one another, so. Hopefully that should be good times there. Nothing too out of the ordinary going on with these bands, but uh, just looking at the odds, many people favor Power Rangers to take this, and I don't think that's too surprising, but man, Goomba's drafts sometimes, they're just absolutely crazy, so they could always mix things up in a pretty drastic way. Yeah, and what we saw from TI Qualifier, Power Ranger can do the same, so this could be a very interesting game. Uh, this bands are really standard, uh, but a first pick from a uh, uh, first pick Leshak is not the most common thing, but he has been become very popular recently. Yeah, just the putting him mid, getting a lightning spam off, like even versus mid lane powerhouses like Queen of Pain, it's not exactly the best times for her, just because well, it's lightning and you don't really have that many options with which to dodge it. And uh, if you want to partner up with a Chen, go ahead and do that. You just push the crap out of your enemies. So. Power Rangers, they might know a little bit of what's coming just from this first pick, and that's why I'm not really a huge fan of the first pick less track. I feel like it is a little bit too revealing. And then Tusk, okay. I have no idea what happens. Yeah, I really like this pick. Uh, I think I'm a big Tusk fan. I think that hero is so underrated, and uh, I think teams are actually starting to pick him up a bit more. I've seen quite a few teams actually starting to run him, uh, and he, I think he's really strong. He can play a roaming kind of style, he can also play aggressive trial lane, and he can also play a safe lane support. So I think that Terry is really good at the moment, and I think it's, we're going to see a lot of more of him coming closer to the TI. Ten seconds I would have expected it coming out from Goomba. Like just historically, they've picked it more often than Power Rangers. Tusk going in with a Rubik. I mean, obviously you know a little bit more about the Tusk than I do, since I don't really think Tusk is fantastic, but I don't really think Tusk and Rubik works that well. Generally, don't you want to be, like, purely aggressive with Tusk? To get someone who could actually smash a little harder than Rubik? Yeah, I'm not a big fan of Rubik here. I think you want a more of a damage dealer to get with the Tusk. I let, I, if you're going to run, run him as a support, at least, uh, Power mm. Ranger might have something else in mind, but in general, he's played as Ten a support. And you kind of want some damage dealing... Uh, Support with it, like Five Sky or Witch Doctor remaining. or something like that. That's a lot of uh, damage. Yeah, Rubik never really gets to that point. Disruptor is going to be the pick for Goomba there. Dying Staying a lot more back. standard than Power Rangers right now. I'm going to assume that Rubik and Tusk are going to be that support duo. If you're not playing it as a super aggressive roaming support Tusk, then I guess you could always make your bridge by getting the pulls off and then, you know, have some sort of other hero you could initiate with the Ten Snowball, a pseudo remaining. Blink Dagger, but. Yeah, I don't know. This Tusk really has yet to find a place in Power Five Rangers lineup. Maybe. I think, yeah, if they grabbed that Skyrath Major, if they grabbed Radiant anyone who would eventually back. get damage, then they'd be, a, they'd be a lot better positioned, because Disruptor, usually a pretty easy kill. Ashrak in the early stage is pretty darn soft as well. Yeah, and Disruptor pick. Yeah, I, I think that's a good pick for a Goomba. It's pretty good Ten against Tusk. Yeah. It's also a very strong support. He was insanely popular in the TI qualifier, at least in the European division. Uh, that hero seems so strong right now. Yeah, it seemed like he was popular across all the regions. I didn't get that much of the Asian games because time zone and such, but yeah. from what I've seen, this dude is absolutely everywhere. And he's a great partner with Lashrak as well. It's like, just glimpse someone into a split earth. It's a slow combination, but it gets the job done. And being able to trap them in with a Lishrak, Kinetic back. Field, Static Storm, Pulse Nova, Lightning, like that's a lot of damage that's pretty much unavoidable once you get caught. Yeah, it's a really good, because you have to be very careful when you're Tusk against Disruptor, in general against a lot of heroes. Radiant I think Goomba has Lishrak and Disruptor now, 
Tusk has to be really, really careful with the snowball. He can't put too many in it and can, he can't go too far because there are two great counters to it Brilliant right now. Man, Tusk would be in such a better position in Dota if he could cancel snowball. Like right now yeah. he's just going to be rolling into, I assume to be his doom a lot of the times. It's an enchantress actually for Power Rangers, so maybe this Tusk isn't going to be that, uh, well, four position supporty type hero. Yeah. Unless we're going to see something even stranger from an enchantress, which I guess is possible. I think we're gonna see a third position Tusk here. That would be my guess, but it's hard to say right now. Like, I think uh, Power Rangers can do a lot of weird things, like even go against the Trident with these heroes they picked now. Uh, they can also maybe go. Uh, they can do a lot of things right here. I think, but it de I think uh, they, depending on how Five they like to play the Tusk, if they want to be aggressive or maybe roam a bit more, they can do anything pretty much. But I'm gonna assume it's gonna be third position Tusk, cause it the role it fits best in if it's gonna be a core. It could be run mid as well. He, his uh, first two spells are pretty good nukes to be honest if you let max them. Mm -hmm. Snowball and Ice Watch do a lot of damage. And uh, But he, in general he's pretty weak mid and he's gonna get zoned out from Leshark pretty hard. So Yeah, just another melee hero versus Leshrac and that pretty much just writes itself. He doesn't have the sustain or the tankiness of someone like a Dragonite. Although I could see the appeal of trying to get Tusk a quicker level 6, because before then, he just kind of feels a little bit lackluster, unless you have some sick combos going with Snowball, but then after level 6, you're like, wow, I could actually get kills by myself now, that's actually a possibility, so, you know, it's probably not going to be what's run, just because the lane matchup is so bad, but, man, just options right now for Power Rangers, quite a few, as Goomba, they pretty much just stick on track, I mean, we're talking a lot about the Power Rangers draft, but, Goomba, they're not going to go with, you know, all in the pushing. There's no Chen pick for them. At least, I don't think there will be. But Shaker Disruptor, that's a lot of control. Yeah, I think Goomba has picked really good so far. Uh, no BKB carries on Power Rangers at all so far. So they have, like, three really good lockdown heroes. And here we see the the in pick. the famous Ditya Ra, Alchemist, probably. Mm -hmm. That we saw got, like, over 1,000 uh, GPM, I think. Yeah. Not sure how high he got, but it was over 1,000 at least. And... It's pretty scary to face. You have to put pressure on that hero, to be honest. And uh, even uh, letting him having bounty runes is so bad for you. He's gonna get so much farm. Dude, that first bounty rune, that's just like, so ridiculous. I can't yeah. believe they actually made that change. Yeah, and also Power Rangers, since they have the Tusk, they have a really strong uh, level 1 uh, lineup as well. Even though Alchemist might not even uh, get the skill, uh, his stun. It's still very strong. You, you get five heroes on top of one hero so fast that Goomba can't really prepare for it. And they don't have that good heroes right now. Uh, they're not bad. Garrocopter is pretty good, but he can get nuked down pretty fast. So it's pretty scary for Goomba. They Ten might not uh, want to contest the bounty here. And you kind of have to. Like, giving up that five much cash to the Alchemist, remaining. it's, what, four times bounty runes on Grievous yeah. Breed now? Yeah, 400 golds. Like, when, before the creep spawn, that's pretty ridiculous. So, yeah. Goomba, their Shaker is going to have to be on point. The threat of Snowball is real, but Shaker has probably one of the best tools uh, in the game, I want to say, to answer that. Just stay back and get the Fissure off, and hopefully then whoever's caught can actually get away. But it is going to be really hard for Goomba to actually contest that, unless they want to grab someone like an Ancient Apparition. Do you think that's Dying still viable here? Man. It is pretty darn good for, up against Alchemist. I don't think they're going to pick an... Uh... An AA here. I think if they're gonna run, uh, they're probably gonna have to shop to check a support duo. Mm -hmm. But if they're not, they need a stunner as support here, not an uh, not an AA. I Ten think the shop has a remaining. pretty good role uh, here if he gets a melee uh, stunner in that case remaining. with him. But probably gonna be a check support, and they're probably looking for an offlaner right there. Yeah. And uh, but I'm not it's sure what time. Goomba can still go aggressive. The tri aggressive trilane here is pretty darn strong, even though Archek is not the best hero. The shot and Gyro are amazing. Yeah, they work pretty well together, and as long as you catch someone in that rocket barrage, that's pretty much going to be lights out. Like, Enchantress, Radiant Rubik, these team. are really soft heroes, Enchantress especially, so rocket barrage is going to tear through them like nobody's business. We have Juggernaut and Puck being banned out. Uh, Puck for the offlane for Goomba, I guess just a little bit more control, but I mean, there's still the old standbys, those clockworks and such that Goomba can grab and pretty much be okay with. Yeah, I'd, I'd really like a clockwork pick here. I think it's a, such a strong hero right now, and it's and it's pretty good against the Power Rangers. Have Rubik is okay, uh, but Enchantress kind of gets owned. Five Alchemist has problem against clockwork as well. Tusk, I don't, I'm not really sure how how he does against that hero, but it I think 
clockwork, that's pretty good. Uh, but Power Ranger probably looking for a mid here. I'm not sure. They kind of need a range. But I don't think something like Shadow Fiend is very strong right there. Even though they could get a mech carry, would be really good for them. Uh, this just seems like there's a little bit too much burst there. Shadow Fiend would be alright. Like, this matchup versus the Shrak is one where you have a ton of chip damage pretty much all of the time. But, yeah, going up against this much burst, I would say, like, you generally want to have someone who's a little more durable, and then they pick up a Weaver. Uh, well... Make. I have no idea what's going to happen with these lanes anymore. I was on the same line as you. Let's just like grab a mid lane hero, be okay with that. But Weaver as the pick, maybe Power Rangers are going to be a little bit more aggressive overall. Uh, this is a really weird pick. We've seen some Weaver uh, coming into play recently, but he's been playing a few different roles. He's been playing some carry and some offline even. But, so it's really hard to predict Power Rangers uh, lanes here. It's probably going to Belch miss mid or safe lane, but Tusk and Weaver can both go mid or offline at, uh, uh, go offline at least. Weaver can be mid, but not sure. A Dark Seer is a really good pick from Goomba. I really like Goomba's drop there, to be honest. Yeah, the Dark Seer, just another hero to add to the Wombo combo, which was something that they were kind of silently building up towards that we didn't actually mention all that much. But yeah, they have a lot of that AoE combination, and early on, answers to the Dark Seer, like they will have a lift up, but unless they get that absolutely perfect with what I assume to be Enchantress coming in as well with the right creeps, then Darkseer is going to have a pretty nice time in the early stages. If he doesn't get you know severely pressured, then his ability to apply pressure to what I assume to be the farming alchemist is going to be really annoying for the alch to deal with until he gets level 6. Yeah, it's the Iron Shell spam is really good against melee carries, so you kind of uh, ruin Alchemist's farm a bit, which is very important that you don't let him get too much farm. So I really prefer Goomba's draft there. Prepare but this uh, Tusk offlane with two mangoes is going to be very interesting to watch. Well, this is not what I expected from Power Rangers, but you know what? I'm okay with it just because it's something new. We'll see if it works out. I always hope that these kind of weirder strategies work out just so we can see more of them in the future. But guys, Power Rangers, they're going to be on the Radiant side. we got Cheshire Cat playing the Tusk going up towards top with the double mangoes, of course. J4 is on the Rubik. Dichira is going to be playing the Alchemist, looking to farm up real hard. King R on the Enchantress, and then where's the Weaver? It's Sunlight. He's on the bottom lane. As Goomba, they're smoked up, actually. They're looking for the Weaver. That's the toughest kill. But Weaver actually doesn't have that much mana. He just shikuchied all the way out to get his ward up, apparently. Yeah, they're not gonna find anyone. I think they wanted to like anti-gank the Tusk, kind of, hoping to bait him in. But on Goomba's side, we're gonna have a moment on the Disruptor. And uh, pass on the Gyro, I got confirmed from the Captain a moment as well, so we know that. I think it's our man on Leshrock, mm -hmm. uh, and we have Shill on Darkseer. And last, we have ED Dota on Earthshaker. ED. Alright, so it looks like we're just gonna have more or less pretty standard lanes from Goomba. They are going to try to contest this bounty rune because this is worth so much. The Alk lift up onto the Gyrocopter, getting a three-man stun, which is going to let Dichira maybe grab this bounty, but no, he gets Split Earth. He's now going to get Rocket Barraged. He didn't grab the bounty either. That's first blood for a moment. That is pretty darn bad, but I think for Power Rangers, it's worth making that play. Uh, that was some Eternal Envy shenanigans. <laughs> it's uh, pretty greedy. Uh, actually, Goomba blocked the camp here in the jungle of Power Rangers, which is pretty good against uh, Enchantress, but also the, against the Alchemist, so he can't go that in form and get even more gold. So, Goomba's early game looking really good with the double bounty and the first blood, and also better laning, I'd say, I think at least. I don't think this Tusk is gonna have a good time, unless he manages to do some really sick shit with the eye shots here. Yeah, I, I was gonna ask you, like, we were just talking about how Power Rangers had so much flexibility with their lane options, but I don't really think that any of these combinations of lanes are actually better than what Goomba have. Like, it's very obvious what Goomba's lanes were going to be, but no matter what, no matter how you shuffle these lanes up for Power Rangers, I don't no. see them getting an edge lane-wise. Oh, I think they're gonna... I'm not sure how they're gonna do this early game. It, it looks like uh, Enchantress wants to put some pressure, I think, on mid to help out Alchemist. They're gonna smoke already, actually, to do that. But I think that's a good start, really good start, actually. That's really what they need. At least get an early kill, and they're gonna go for mid or bottom. Not sure what they're looking for. Oh, well, Lashrak, he's at half HP, and half HP for a Lashrak is already pretty darn low. He's at 300 HP. Alchemist, he's level 2, hasn't leveled up anything just yet, so he can grab this concoction just to start this fight. 
Uh, well, he's gonna get stunned, first of all. Lightning as well. Alchemist, no longer really capable of going in, but here comes the Chen Creeps plus the Rubik. They have a lift, and well, the a pretty easy kill. There's also a Courier here, which they're not gonna really go for. Ditra is gonna stun himself, which is a shame, but the going down is gonna help Alchemist in a big way. Yeah, it's ha kind of half-slow reaction from our man here. Uh, it's not really easy to react to, though. You're getting do do like that. He could have probably survived it if he reacted instantly and ran top, but a uh, really good patient for Power Ranger. Not uh, diving when he was too far away, so he would easily just run to top lane and escape. They just waited until he had to fall back a bit and they got the pick off. Oh, they're not done. They're going to find a moment in his own jungle with an invisible Cheshire Cat. This is probably going to be level 2 for the Tusk. He's trapped by the shards. The moment has nowhere to go. Actually, no, not of experience for level 2 just yet, but still, it's a kill on the Disruptor, and, well, the Roamers, Enchantress, and Rubik. If King R keeps getting these high damage creeps, the net, as well as that clap, that wrecks people, then they can continuously rotate around and apply this pressure and really make up for the fact that their lanes aren't that strong. Yeah, it's really important that King R and uh, Yay 4 here gets a lot of work done in early game. Because I think uh, Power Rangers is going to have a really hard time unless they make some really good plays. Already on bottom lane, we see Shill here putting a lot of pressure on the Weaver that has no region left uh, anymore. So, And uh, since the supports are not uh, in uh, anywhere close, uh, Shill is just going to creep skip. And I don't think Weaver can do a lot here. Uh, hopefully, he can get lost, but that's all he can really look for. Yeah, he needs a little bit of extra gold if he's going to get any significant regen as well. Like, this doesn't look like a Lincoln Sphere game. From or for the Weaver, so that's probably just not what he's gonna go for. Probably a bottle, like out of necessity, versus the yeah. Here. I think he really should get a bottle here. I think it's, uh, he really needs. It. Also, it's pretty good region because I don't think he's gonna go Lincoln, like you said. And then you want some kind of sustain, and a bottle is a good way to get it. Unworthy. Well, we'll see if he can actually get that one before the chill completely applies the screws to him. This Darks here is gonna have absolute free farm, and well, Sol Ring, once that comes up, then Iron Shells are gonna flow like water. Up towards the top jungle once again, King Ark, J4, oh, they're man. looking for the Lashrak. This time Lashrak sees them coming, Ditcherod not arming up his stun just yet. Boots on Lashrak might get lifted, the angle's pretty good, and they do catch him! He's lifted up now into the stun and the beatdown. King Ark's gonna draw that kill, Lightning does fly beforehand, Fissure as well, but it's a little bit too late in a moment. Only level 1 and the disruptor can't get the glimpse back. That's two kills now on this Lashrak. Is that good enough to redeem this uh, weak laning stage? I think so. It's uh, it's really what they need and it's been going very well. Like, they couldn't also form a better early game for Power, power Rangers here. But it's still... Uh, okay, they might find a pick on Shill here. That's really big actually. Uh, the troll actually doesn't have an ensnare. I don't think they could get that if Chill just walks out right now. He's kind of circling around now. He's gonna get lifted up and this creeps beating him down the entire time. Chill did this whole like circle thing. I think if he just went straight home, he would have been fine. I think he could have done that a little bit. He felt a bit trapped, I think. He didn't look at the man on the troll summoner, so he kind of panicked. Because uh, if, the, uh, if that uh, ensnare was up, there's no way he's gonna survive. So he's kind of trying to like buy time and things like that. So it's a pretty hard Dyer's decision there to like, what are you going to do? Because if you yuke, you can, if you're lucky, you can get out. But if you run, you maybe could have gotten out just because there was not uh, an ensnare up. It's also a pretty hard call for King R to make that play, actually. Knowing that if you go in, it's not completely a bluff, but kind of a bluff. Like, the, the thing that you're really scared of, she doesn't have. The dark troll just didn't have that ensnare. So, yeah, making that play just to begin with is just going to bluff the crap out of that Darkseer and got them a kill. So, 4-1 now for the Power Ranger side and Goomba. They are you know, still free farming up with this Gyrocopter, but the pressure that's being applied to the Weaver isn't really that much. He is last hitting pretty decently Sunlight, and he has actually gone for a Ring of Health. So, maybe just a casual one. I don't think you build it into anything in this game. I think he's going to go Link it if he decides to go that. I think some uh, Weaver players really, like... They, they, everyone goes Lincoln, like so they kind of like they, they, it's kind of a requirement because they get into that mindset that you have to get it, and I think it's a pretty bad item in overall to be honest. Uh, I hope he goes something else because I want to see what he could do because I think Lincoln is kind of uh, not a very good item right now. It's it's only good against certain heroes, and even then it kind it kind of needs uh, some kind of a buff. I feel like. 
And even if even if it did get buff, like Goomba have so many good anti-Lincoln heroes. Oh, they're gonna dive the mid lane. Fissure on the King are gonna hold him out for a little bit, but Edie's gonna get dropped down very quickly. Dominating Street for its enchantress. Now the snowball outwards towards the Lish track. He does have a haste stream, so he's not gonna get clipped by that snowball, but we have Gyrocopter coming in with level 3 Rocket Barrage. Ditch and Raw is caught, gonna get ground down by the Rockets and the Ion Shell. That's a kill for Goomba. And they're also gonna clean up Treasure Cat in the meantime. Hastrin from the Lashrak, that's a timely one, and Power Rangers get punished real hard from their dive. Suddenly, it's a three-for-one change. Yeah, that Hastrin on Lashrak really saved that fight. I think if uh, if he didn't have that, I think they would have lost that pretty hard. Uh, he might find a pick off on King Arc. King Arc doesn't have a lot of HP with their Kane boots, actually. Just the Iron Shell, I think, is going to get the kill. Well, yeah. you know, that he range. the Lightning. On Lightning Storm. Much like your head. But that uh, was kind of throwing away the early advantage that Power Ranger built up. They... They lost the boundary runes early and as well as the first spot, but they still took very good control of the early game. But then they kind of threw it away right now here. And I think it's even in favor of Goomba right now. They have the momentum and probably they go the next lead already. And Sunlight and J4, they are feeling pretty good in the bottom lane. The Shaker is thinking about making a full rotation here. Sunlight can't really do anything if they decide to start this fight. Unfortunately for Goomba, they don't really have that much mana sustain on this Lashrac. They had arcane boots on someone, or no, that was Power Rangers, never mind. They now have it on the Lashrak, so they'll maybe be able to make this play. Thanks. And Power Rangers, they're going to need to bring in the cavalry. Like, if someone gets caught in an ion shell, then they're just dead. Yeah, they're going to put a lot of pressure here on bottom, I think. With uh, Weaver not really that sustainable right now. He's going to go for the Perseverance, so this is probably going to be a Lincoln's. But it's not the best fighting uh, really here, early game. Well, they're um, going to be spotted out, Goomba, so they they know that there's no surprises here whatsoever, but while this is happening, a moment is getting some free time in lane. He doesn't really have much to fear from this Alchemist, since, well, he doesn't know about it, but Alchemist has gone for a very farm-heavy build, as to be expected. Disruptor is going to grab his level 6, and then I assume rejoin his bottom allies lane. down towards bottom, but they're going to catch Sunlight, actually. Pulse Nova, not quite going to do it. One more hit is all they need. Oh, chase him down. He has mana for one Shikuchi, now two Shikuchis, but Pulse Nova Edict, or just Pulse Nova rather, that's going to kill off the Weaver. It's a dive that really should not be happening. Weaver, well, I guess just with Fissure, it is possible, but Weaver with no backup, actually, that's kind of surprising. Yeah, it's pretty squishy with the Perseverance build. He doesn't have a lot of base HP, so he can get killed pretty easily with two stones, and the Shell is doing a lot of damage, and he can't really tank that efficiently. Um, he got trapped in a corner and Iron Shell just killed him together with Lashrak uh, ultimate. Well, maybe Power well, Rangers get something in exchange. They have two Mud Golems, or two Shard Golems, I guess. They're going to time out, but still, Dark Troll Summoner is what they want, and that's what they have. They might get Sandwich here, actually. Oh, well, can they burst down the Gyrocopter before the Sandwich, the second slice of bread, is actually applied? They see him now. Smoke is going to oh, dispel. They're going to lift him up into the ensnare, but the call down. Rocket Barrage as well. Kingar's got to book it right into the Lightning, though. That's no escape. Now the Fissure onto J4. He's going to get glimpsed back for good measure. I don't know if that Split Earth landed, but I don't really think it matters. It's a two for a zero. And, yeah, they definitely have nowhere near the damage to kill this Gyrocopter. Yeah, and they're getting a stack here together with the Enchanted Scripts. That's a lot of gold for him. But I was... Uh... They're kind of overplaying their uh, their support cell. No smoking uh, here in the jungle is pretty greedy. Gyrocopter is pretty farmed, and if uh, Tusk is not close by, they do not have the firepower to kill him, even if he was alone. And uh, that's too kind of uh, headed to in heading to Gomba, and they lose another hero. It looks oh. like. Yep, Treasure Cat is so very dead. Just gets Gomba's back, and that's the power of Disruptor right there. Always have to be wary of that. Even if Tusk was like more in that fight, like if he was just snowballing in, ice shards and whatnot. I'm also pretty sure that they just don't have enough to kill off the gyrocopter at that point. He was at like a thousand HP, I think with strength threads he's at that or close to that, so that's a, a lot of HP to grind through on Radiant heroes that don't really have a ton of damage. Just Rubik is only level 3 right now, so he's pretty much just a telekinesis Radiant's and nothing more. Yeah, they kind of lost a lot of momentum with the, these two deaths. Uh, the deaths in mid and then uh, going up here and dying again. It's really hurting the supports of Power Rangers. And uh, I think Goomba is going to take momentum here and take down this mid tower now and possibly look for Roche. They don't have the highest damage, but it's not bad at the same time. Garo does quite a lot. Under and Iron Shell is okay as well. Gyrocopter just grabbed his helm of the Dominator, so tanking Roshan is going to be a little bit easier. Get some random creep, maybe the Seder that he just grabbed, but if not that, then stacks for the uh, Stacks for later for the Gyrocopter in the Ancient Camp. Or he can just still chill up on top lane and just be fine with that. Earthshaker is getting 
quite a bit of gold actually he has a thousand gold towards his blink dagger which i assume he's just gonna go straight for it doesn't even have level six yet and darks here also closing in on his mech as he's constantly applying pressure goomba have done a great job pushing without actually having edict on the list track this is you know a pretty common build just get split earth just get the lightning just get sheer burst damage but still two towers down in only 10 minutes that's not bad at all yeah, I see Shield of Water Lane, uh, Sunlight attacking, he, he doesn't even take L uh, Darkseid at this point, it, it has no damage. It's, it takes quite a long time for Weaver to get damage, unless he goes for a really, like, Glass Cannon build with, like, uh, Freds uh, and Deso. And, uh, uh, smoke from uh, Goomba, actually, and they're gonna find a pickoff here. Good, uh, good movement here from Chris Arcata. though. Oh, Dark and Troll Summoner. What an MVP, man. These Dark Trolls have been working overtime. Even the ones that have no mana. Just gonna scare them away. But also these two creeps might just die. Oh, also get a glimpse back on King R. Suddenly his creeps don't look too impressive. He's swarmed with enemy heroes. They get a stomp onto Edie, but that's about it, man. A moment's glimpses have been backbreaking, and that's not the kill that they wanted, but still, it's a kill nonetheless, and I don't think they have enough power to go for Roshan right away, but still, they're getting kills. That's never bad. Yeah, I was surprised they got attack. a kill there. It uh, really good position from Crash like that. standing high. I kind of, he kind of predicted that smoke, yeah. and they still lost there, which shows how strong Goomba are right now. And yeah, like you can predict a smoke, but you can't really predict the smoke with a hasted Lishrac. If that wasn't there, then I'm pretty sure that everyone on Power Rangers are fine. Yeah, and the top lane actually, Garakop might go down. There's a lift as well. Well, he couldn't get the call down out in time. He's gonna get a little bit of distance away from Ditchy Raw. One spear, not quite gonna do it. Now it's stuck in a corner. Gonna try and TP oh, out. Oh, that's not gonna oh. happen. One more spear is gonna kill him off. But here comes Lestrac. He's invisible. Lightning to kill off the Enchantress. Bouncing through the creeps as well. Ditchy Raw now putting himself in a corner. He's gonna dodge a split Earth. Glimpse, though. That's something you can't dodge. Static Storm, same exact case. And Edie gonna close in looking for some stuns just blade. in case. But no, he has a Shadow Blade. And they have no detection. That must be a really new item. That must have been what opened up yeah. in the gyrocopter. Yeah, I was uh, pretty sick play from the Tierra, but it was not too bad for Goomba. Uh, it's a lot of form from Alchemist though, but they're not. It doesn't create any space for Weaver because Darkseid is taking more of the bottom lane than than the Weaver is, and he's gonna have mech now as well. So I'm gonna assume Goomba now decides to push unless they're waiting for one more core item. Anyone? The Yules is up on Leshrac and. Uh, I don't think they should wait anymore. They have pretty much the items they want. Actually, this Earthshake is really close to Blink, considering it's minute 13 only. Hey, he's only died once. That's a lot <laughs> That's a lot less than what Earthshakers usually experience. I think for Goomba, if they're going to wait for anything, it's probably just level 10 on the Shrak, getting that one-point Diabolic Edict, just going to shove the towers that much harder. It's not that far away anyway, so that's probably going to be worth waiting for. Chill is going to... Swarm? No, those bugs actually don't connect. That was really close, but yeah, he has an Observer Warrior that's going to spot out absolutely everyone in Power Rangers, and if Goomba want to, they could actually go into this jungle and look for a rumble in the enemy jungle, and there's not much that Power Rangers will be able to do to actually fight that toe-to-toe, -to -toe. and they are going to do just that. Smoke up. They have a glimpse. Static Storm's cooling down as well, and they're going to intercept King R. This is a very soft enchantress still, even with the point booster. Fissure not going to be thrown just yet. It's going to wall off King R on the wrong side, but Split Earth and the Burst still enough. More than enough, in fact. Lift up in the Shrak and to do next to nothing, and it's just, again, free kill on the Enchantress. Yeah, good smoke, but they need to make something out of this. I think they need to take a tower or something with this kill. Oh, well, Jaro, he's gonna get caught. He gets the call down out this time, though, and the Rocket Barrage. Cheshire Cat getting ground down. Oh. He's gonna get bursted down in no time. And now it's the Tiraru's on the run. They don't have the glimpse range. I don't think they do, but it's a little bit short. It at least doesn't bring him back enough, Ooh, but they, they have Noodle Scepter, they have no Fissure, they have no Follow-Up Sun, but they do have Dust, and now the Static Storm, Ditcherah is caught, and the Shadow Blade won't help him this time. Might get the kill on Edie, but the Kinetic Field just holding him out of range, and Ditcherah does ultimately go down. Man, these Disruptor Glimpses are, again, just so hard for Power Rangers to deal with, and even with the Shadow Blade, you can't escape once that Yule Scepter is up. Yeah, it was Goomba really impressing me right now with this place. Uh, that was a do-or-die moment for uh, the toss there, when he went on the Gyro. Because if he gets that kill, he has a big comeback in this game and could own bottom lane, Weaver. <laughs> down to 4 HP. But... So now they're going to try to turn this one out. I think Chill is fine. He has 5 stick charges, probably even more. Oh. And oh, those shards. That's not what you want. Ice yeah, shards that's... are such a finicky skill. Sometimes that happens. But still, even if those land, Chill is very really tanky. 
Yeah, he might have gone down. I actually don't think he would have, but uh, you can't miss those side shots here. And he is having a really hard game. Dying against Skyro there. Uh, he could have gotten a lot of gold if he picked up the kill, but instead he lost. And then missing die charge, that kind of hurt your uh, mindset a bit. And you're gonna, probably going to feel a lot frust uh, very frustrated. And uh, I hope he can recover though. And now's not the time to be tilting out for Cheshire Cat. He was on the offlane. This is an offlane tusk, mind you. And, well, the net worth doesn't really indicate that. Right next to J4 in the net worth. And he hasn't actually done anything. The Rubik has done a lot more, in fact, than the tusk. Like, there has been no walrus punches. There's been, like, two snowballs, only one of which has connected. And Ice Shards, as a nuke, like, 280, it's okay, but it's not exactly worth picking the hero for, so Tusk really needs to start kicking into gear really shortly. Up until this point, I see no benefit towards picking up this Tusk so far. Yeah, it's not been working out at all, and this Urshage has a 16-minute blink dagger now. This is trouble for Power Rangers. This is probably the timing. Uh, I don't think I think they wanted to push earlier, push earlier, but because Urshage was so close to the blink dagger, they probably wanted to wait until he had it. Under attack. Well, I mean, pushing earlier, pushing later, the towers are going to fall one way or another for Power Rangers, and again, I don't think Power Rangers have enough to defend this. Even with the BKB up on Alchemist, they probably won't have enough. Like, Alchemist will be very tanky, he'll be hard to move, yeah, but no one else is actually going to be doing damage behind him, so it's all Alchemist at that point, and if Goomba survived that BKB, then... Well, the, they have to worry about less and less time uh, duration of BKB in the future, so they need a lot more Power Rangers than just this Alchemist to have farm. King R also needs to not die right now. Centaur gonna get Yules up. That's gonna disrupt her free passage. That's a pretty smooth play. Ditchra also probably gonna stun himself. Sunlight's gonna chase forward a moment. He's gonna pop the Lincolns here with the Thunderstrike. Now Static Storm onto one. It's only Sunlight caught in there, but this might be enough damage with the Vacuum back. They will kill off the Weaver. Now chasing for more. King R is the target right now, and he doesn't really have that much help. Surging the Lashak forward. King R is going to try to TP out, but that's so freaking obvious, and he's going to get caught, and he will be brought down. That's 2-0 for Goomba, and they probably are going to look for either one of these Tier 2 towers. Really, it's up to them. Yeah, we were dying there. It's not what he wanted, and getting shut down right off you pick up your first survivability item. It's not fortified. looking good for you then. Uh, you kind of spent 5k gold and it didn't do anything when you picked it up. And is it really gonna do anything for you the later the game goes? Uh, it Right now it's a pretty useless item to be honest, unless he can put it on Alchemist and that could be Watch something, but he has to be KB either way. Hey, he blocked uh, a Thunderstrike man. Level 1 yeah. Thunderstrike is so threatening. He actually died because he had it, because if uh, he hadn't blocked the Thunder Strike, he would have run away, being scared. Because when it got blocked, he got like, okay, I can do this. So he got cocky, and then he went into the ultimate, and he just died. Spend a whole bunch of gold, put yourself in dangerous situations. This isn't a Mask of Madness, it at least doesn't look like one. So, it's yeah. uh, rough times for the Weaver, but again, we already went over how the Lincoln Sphere isn't really a great item versus the Goomba heroes in this game, so we were going to need some sort of follow-up item, any follow-up item really, if he wants to actually help out, because he has no threat right now. Swarm is not a threat, Shikuchi is annoying, but again, not threatening, and with Blink Daggers on the Darkseer and the Shaker now, this is going to be much more difficult for Power Rangers as the minutes progress. Cheshire Cat up towards top, is going to get Vacuum back, Ion Shells, or at least one is up, Cheshire Cat has enough movement speed to get out of there, but he forces a TP this Dark Seer from the Enchantress without doing anything. Yeah, that's actually really good for, for the Goomba side. Uh, King are kind of reacting there, a bit panicky maybe, and it costs him quite a lot. And they might lose a hair on bottom lane if Dyer's Goomba finds Ditiara, but he has to be KP, so he probably can get out either way. Yeah, and they're also, we're looking for the Weaver perhaps, but he teleported up towards the top lane. They were just on a dewarding mission, so not with the intent of getting any kills, so it's fine that they didn't. Uh, the Lashrak is still only working with level 1 Edict right now. I'm actually surprised that these tier 2 towers for Power Rangers are still standing. I guess for Power Rangers, they do have this Alchemist who is farmed out of his mind, but again, some other hero for Power Rangers needs to start doing something. King R is rushing an Aghanim Scepter. I guess that is, in theory, an item that would help the Enchantress do something, but he's so far away from it. Yeah, it's uh, pretty underwhelming right now. But I think Goomba are playing very passive. I'm not a big fan of this because mm -hmm. Alchemist, Alchemist is out farming them pretty hard. He's farming really well actually, and uh, Goomba are, are not farming that good. Uh, I think uh, Weaver is not too far behind the course of Goomba, even though he's had a very hard time. And 
they need to be more aggressive, I feel like. Take towers, take Roche, uh, and diminish, make the map a lot smaller for power rangers and take uh, control right now. Well, they're gonna use vacuum up towards top, but Chill is in a sandwich. There's an invisible Cheshire Cat who's gonna catch him with the shards. Walrus Punch, not gonna be used, and the Surge might get him out of range of the Snowball as well. No, it'll connect, albeit barely. Now Surge stolen. Chill is still really tanky. Walrus Punch is there. He used the mech already, and he's gonna go down. The rest of the team, however, down towards bottom lane. And they're gonna get the tower push after all, but I think if Chill was just there, they could even be pressuring the high ground right now. Yeah, that's place created though still. They got a tower for it. Uh, losing a hero here is not that big of a deal. But uh, not sure if uh, Crash Cat is used to this hero. He, he can't. Oh, I don't know, mind if it was the four inch couriers that were suiciding mid, but it was. Just Goombas. But he kinda, it looked like he, I, I thought he was gonna use Warrior Punch on Darkstar, but he didn't uh, use it, so I'm not sure, because it's been changed a bit, and it's really weird to use right now. And I'm not sure if he's, he knows how it works correctly, or if he's like, maybe just instincts uh, not being used to this patch. So. And a bleak deck actually, that's pretty early though. With that pick of a Dark Set, that actually makes that pick of a lot worse, because now they have the initiation tool on the Power Rangers. Well, assuming Tusk can actually use the Walrus Punch correctly. I have no idea how Walrus Punch works right now, dude. Like, I'm not a Tusk player. I do not like playing this hero, but yeah. Blink in for a punch. It's, you know, not exactly a Blink Hex from Lion or something like that, but it can get the job done if Goomba are actually caught, you know, by surprise. And so far, it might actually be a surprise enough. Just because Cheshire Cat at that point, if he could just keep throwing out his skills and will, without getting a static storm or whatever, something like that, yes. he should be doing a lot of damage, especially since he's rejoining with everyone else. And they're going to smoke up, looking for this Lashrac. He has Yule Scepter Bloodstone, but I think this Bloodstone is going to have a couple less charges. Here comes the Blink. Walrus Punch. Fissure is there, but the Snowball's going to dodge it from Cheshire Cat. Still, 101 is still alive, but he's going to commit Suicide. Edie, looking for the Echo Slam. Did some pretty good damage, but that's about it. It's a one kill on the Earthshaker. Again, it's not what Power Rangers wanted. They do use a 10 second BKB ch charge for that though. I guess it's still fine, but again, less than ideal. Yeah, it was, it's still good. Uh, uh, you see, the BKB is not that bad for you, but it's not ideal either. Uh, but uh, Goob, uh, Earthshaker going there and dying is not uh, ideal. Uh, I think they could have actually picked up, uh, picked off uh, Crash Eye Cat there if uh, if he used himself, uh, Leshrac, because he had ultimate up and uh, just blood stopped the ride immediately. He could have used himself, waiting for uh, so the ultimate does damage uh, while he's used, and then uh, Crash Cut was very low. He could have probably went down, and then the bloodstone shot. Then I could have come out afterwards. Sunlight but... caught in a corner is gonna get vacuum back. Wall's been deployed. There is a time lapse right now, but Sunlight. Really doesn't want to use it. At this point, time lapsing, just going to change his position. Not really much his health. Call down completely off the mark. Sunlight trying to TP away, and Chill has no more interrupts for this, so they will let that Weaver get away. Then now again, let's the Shrak down towards bottom lane. Same exact scenario. Dichira in the front with the Shadow Blade gets a pretty nice hit off. And now Shrak losing a lot of HP really quickly. Yule Scepter will save him, though. Edie going to come in with the Fissure. No Echo Slam this time, but he has a lot more backup in a moment. Glimpse is going to probably kill off this Rubik, and yeah, he's definitely dead. The track is going to get away. They're going to surge forward on Chill, look for more, but man, Goomba, they're just like refusing to group up as five and actually take these towers, and this time it didn't cost them, but it feels like they're costing themselves a lot of their lead. Yeah, if Crash or Cat had beat there, that would have been an easy kill on uh, the left rock, but they forced a four-man rotation and they only lost the support, uh, and uh, they all should be still run uh, away and can continue farming, so it's not the worst trade, but... Boomba stay controlling and now Crash oh. get his caught there, I think. Okay, well, random observer ward there for the dire. He's gonna get vacuum back. Snowball is there though, Edict and Pulse Nova. It's a beyond godlike streak at this point for the Lashrac, and well he doesn't have another suicide, so that streak is a little bit fragile. But they're gonna go for the push regardless. This tower, not too healthy to begin things off, and this tower is definitely gonna fall. Question is, are any other towers going to fall? Doesn't seem like that's the case. I think at this point Goomba should be looking towards Roshan. I really think they should go to Roshan right now. I don't think they will be managed to go here. They can get a kill on Rubik, I guess. That's nice, yeah. but again, it's only a support hero. They need something a little bit higher bounty than just a Rubik. The Tusk is still down for another 14 seconds. King Arwalking a little bit too far forward. Gets Fissure blocked off and vacuum back. 
Okay, that's good enough. Now they can go for this yeah. high ground push. It seems like if Power Rangers want to throw themselves one by one to this meat grinder, then Goomba are going to get free Raxes. Blink out from Chill as Sunlight and Dictra are the only ones to hold this. It's not the worst high ground defense, I guess, but Lashrak is another level 4 edict up, and Goomba, they are happy with the tower damage. They get a couple of free kills. They bring the tower down almost towards lethal range, and they could slide down towards the Roshan pit, or I guess defending top is fine as well. I think they to... Passive Goomba. They have just had so many chances to go Roche, but they I don't know if they they kind of want to lock the map down I guess, but they're not doing that either because Weaver is split pushing very well on top lane uh, when he was there at least, and Ashmis is farming uh, more than Goomba, so I really need I really think Goomba could make more use of this early lead that he got. Maybe Goomba just don't think that they're as ahead as they really are. They're going to find Cheshire Cat and Ditchy with an invisible Lishrak, and Gyrocopter's going to start calling down those missiles. The Split Earth is going to whiff, but they do catch the Alchemist in detection range, oh. and he's going to stun himself. Well, it yeah. doesn't really matter. He was dead anyway. Can they get glimpse anyone back? The missile is... Well, there's no one actually nearby. So a moment, even though glimpse range is ridiculously broken, shouldn't find anyone unless they really want to chase this missile down. Which is also probably just not going to work, but it's a kill on the Alchemist, and that's a big kill. Yeah, We've been getting in tower mid though, so he's just trading, but bottom lane, uh, Dox is actually pushing the tier 3 tower and getting quite a lot of damage actually. And J4 trapped in mid. Treasure Cat King are going to try to chase away that Darkseer. It's J4 to die, almost guaranteed. Gets nothing off. Stolen Chant Totem is not going to do anything. Oh. Chill. Going to get walled off by some shards. He's going to dare the enemies to go into this wall, however. But in Snowball, they don't make illusions. Chill now can take even more damage. Walrus Punch is there, and Chill will die to shards. The split-pushing Darkseer. I mean, it again, you, as you said, did a lot of damage to this tower, but giving up his life for that? Like, that's not worth it. Yeah, I think these fights are slowly benefiting Power Rangers. Like, even if they lost two supports in mid, with push actually top lane, Weaver might go down, and he takes a fall, actually. And so, time lapse. never mind that. <laughs> time lapse Shikuchi, not enough. Did you raw? Gonna panic throw his concoction before it stuns himself. The tower is going to drop, and suddenly four heroes up on the top lane for Goomba with Blink Echo Slam at the ready. Acid Spray, though, is pretty good up against the Blink Daggers, so they probably can't go for that, but man, these tier 3 towers are gonna fall very shortly, and Goomba slowly but surely are chipping away at the Power Rangers base. I think we both agree that it probably should have been a little bit faster, but it's better late than never. Yeah, I'm okay with them not going high ground, mm -hmm. but not going Roche is could really backfire, because when Weavy picks up, uh, okay, he's not gonna go, okay, he's, yeah, he's gonna pick up the Deso, yeah, I thought it was gonna sh change into Maestrom or something, but the Minus Armor is pretty yes. good with the Alchemist and then Deso, and even uh, the Swarm works on Roche, I think, as well, so that's even more Minus Armor, so they could uh, snipe the Roche very fast, and if Power Ranging picks up Roche, the game is even then, and I really hope Gomba goes for the Roche right now, because they have... We was dead for 50 seconds, and they mm -hmm. decided to take an ancient stack. There was two, just two, two stacks on uh, Power Rangers side. They can't take that either way when Goomba was taking Roche. So I think they're wasting a lot of time, and now Power Rangers are going to smoke up instead. And at this point, it's not like Goomba are lacking the tank ability or the damage to kill off Roshan. They have a Medallion on the Shaker, they have level 4 Edict on the Lashrak, and they have a Gyrocopter who's sitting on quite a bit of health and damage. So Roshan would have dropped like a rock, but instead it seems like they're going to leave Chill on the bottom lane. That's probably not the greatest decision, unless Stitcher Ross stuns himself. Treasure Cat's going to blink right in. Suddenly Chill is up against a 1v5. And I don't really like Chill's odds here. He's going to vacuum a whole bunch of them back into a wall, do a lot of damage. But uh, yeah, just not enough damage with King R's heal. And... That's another casualty for Goomba. Still, Roshan is alive, and now at this point, I think Power Rangers, they, can they just go in right now? Yeah, no, I, I, they can't because of the Shrapto Agonims, but they don't know that, so maybe they'll try. But this Shrapto is going to completely wreck them Radiant's with this Agonims if they go into Rosh right now. So, But I kind of feel like, like I mentioned before, that the Power Rangers are slowly getting back into this game with the pickoff. Uh, and like they kind of even fights, but the space is being created for them more than Goomba. But then Weaver died on top, and then I thought Goomba, like, they can actually secure a lot of uh, momentum right here. But they, I don't think they're doing the right decisions. And it could backfire, but finally they're gonna go into Roche, even though they had better opportunities earlier, I think. Well, yeah, 4v5 is probably not exactly the best time to go for Roshan, but again, they have the medallion, they have the damage, and the tank ability to actually clear this. Will Power Rangers react? It seems like the answer to that is no. They have two heroes pushing up top lane. Swarm is going to spot everyone out, but yeah, I don't really think that's going to do that much aside from that. They really need to bring 
the Tusk and the Enchantress back to this if they want to do anything about it. So they're going to sacrifice the Aegis towards the enemy side in exchange for a marginal amount of farm. I think that's the only decision they really had available to them, but now the push is going to be incoming and it's pinged out for the bottom lane. Yeah, power, uh, Goomba had a ward on top lane that spotted both both heroes, so they're pretty comfortable going to Roche there knowing that they can't contest. But uh, I thought it could have been very scary. I think Power Ranger, Power Ranger are really strong right now, and the, the Weaver is going to pick up a Desolator very soon, and they have a lot of focus damage. The Butterfly is up on Gyro though, so he is pretty safe. He has okay HP as well, so I think they can do a lot of work oh. here. They caught Alchemist with the Yule Scepter. Split Earth is there as well. Where's the Fissure follow-up? Where's any follow-up? Really, Ditcherral's going to get a lot of distance out. Blink forward from Chill, dropping the wall back. Only going to catch Hedger Cat. Makes an illusion for Alchemist, but that's about it. Shard's going to catch three heroes in. Very clumped up right now, but the Guardian Greaves going to keep them all at tip-top shape. Rax's one have gone down. Now the stun onto Gyrocopter. He has no BKB to defend against that, but the Lashrak doesn't give a damn. He's going to charge the front lines with that Aegis in tow. Dishirah's going to try to let loose this damage output, but now the Static Storm and the Echo Slam onto two with the call down as well. They're going to lose the Lashrak, but that's only the Aegis right now in exchange for the Rubik. Snowball is there. It's going to snowball right into Edie as Dishirah has to disengage once again. Stuns up the Earthshaker, but now the Lashrak is back. Gyrocopter's still at pretty much full HP. The Range Raxes have gone down. Will they be able to take the melee as well? Goomba. They are going to have to fall back, it seems, with no more Aegis. That was a really great fight for Power Rangers, mostly because Goomba didn't follow up on the Alchemist pickoff. They're going to try again. Chain Stun this time going to be a little bit better. Ditcher Raw not going to put into the Snowball this time, and he's going to go down. Once again, Guardian Greaves going to keep everyone in tip-top shape. They're going to grab the Shaker as well, uh, the Tusk, rather. And Sunlight can do nothing but watch from the sidelines. So the primary initiation, not the best, but they get it done in the end. That's going to be the mid lane completely caved in. And bottom lane as well. They're going to go straight for it. Fissure going to connect into King R. Chill right there with the Ion Shells. Caught in the kinetic field as well. He can do nothing but run in circles. He will go down. Sunlight going to try to snipe a moment, but he doesn't have enough damage for that. The disruptor is very tanky with the Ags. They're going to catch Sun with the stun and bring him down as well. No time for the time lapse. Buyback from the Alchemist and the Tusk. But even if they get some kills here. These are really expensive and they're not going to. The clean disengage from Goomba getting a whole slew of kills. Actually, no, they might get a moment. That's not really a big deal. Oh, the stolen fissure. Edie with the stolen fissure, it looks like. Call down is there, however. Edie, he lift it up before he can launch his fissure in retaliation. He's gonna go down. And now it's Chill and the gyrocopter against oh the world. Although Shrak is caught in the back lines. He's gonna get let loose with that pulse. No, but it draws BKB up. But it isn't doing jack up against this gyrocopter. Now he's gonna try to book it. And it looks like he might get away. It's going to be close. Blink forward from Chill. Vacuum back. Gyro damage. It's enough. Power Rangers have no more heroes alive except for the Enchantress, but she can do nothing about this. Big place from the left back there. He Bloodstone denied himself to save his team or save the Earthshaker. And then he insta respawns, gets pushed to travel and TPs down to the fight again and secures the Rex and two kills. This just in. Bloodstone is now a healing item. It's a support item, guys. We know about yeah. this. It's GG well played call by Power Rangers. Such a great start, but I think it was just uh, a little bit too aggressive. I think going for the gyrocopter kill, like, I don't know, like 10 minutes in up on the top lane, that really was what set things really in motion for Goomba. I think they had a weaker drop overall. Mm -hmm. uh, they needed a lot of space. They got kind of good space, but Weaver and Alchemist are not the strongest carries in that sense either. They, they have no one that can really go into and They have no burst to kill one hero. And the sustain from Goomba is pretty good with uh, the Greaves, and they can just push down. And uh, the Gyrocopter is doing way more damage than Alchemist and Weaver together, so. Just needed more farm on any of the non Alchemist heroes, really. That would have made a pretty big difference for the Power Ranger side, but it's too late for that. Gyrocopter ending the score at 10 1 11, 16 4 14. There's some flashy numbers from the cores of Goomba, but this is only game one, guys. Goomba Gaming, not exactly the favorites to win this one, but after a pretty good game one showing, a weak draft from Power Rangers, they're looking pretty strong right now. We'll see if they can clean it up in a 2-0 sweep. We'll be right back in game two. I'm Mike Lars. I've been joined by Kefka, guys. Don't go anywhere.